Hello, I am your new favorite JJ Caballero, and this is Mano Stereo Video, a podcast about movie music. I'm a songwriter, producer, DJ, and I love movies, and this is the perfect excuse to talk about music and movies with love. <laughs> <laughs> my co host and my love. Up. I know, huh? <laughs> I had a vava, like the Ooh, whole time I had a little vava dripping. on the top of my mouth, just like. I'm probably going to hear that myself, but yeah. (laughs) How's it going, my love? How's your day been? My day was pretty good. I did a lot of fun color today. I was thankful. Everybody's been in the Valentine spirit. Oh, cool. So lots of pink hairs. Good, good, Mm -hmm. good. And then we just had dinner. That was very delicious. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. That was very good for your the the impromptu uh, salad dressing. That was very good. (laughs) Homemade. <laughs> Homemade impromptu salad dressing. That was very good. Thank you very much for that. And thank you all for tuning in today and listening to the show. This is the third episode of our Twilight Saga listen through, watch through. It's the Twilight Saga Eclipse. That's what we're talking about today. Twilight Eclipse. Last week we talked about Twilight's New Moon. Not Twilight's or Twilight New Moon or Twilight Saga New Moon. It's just New Moon. moon. It's because it's the saga. It's the saga and it's So it's like, it's so, I mean, it's originally Twilight, New Moon, Eclipse. It Mm -hmm. could be just that. Like, it doesn't have to be the Twilight Saga. It's it's officially listed like that, though. Yeah, I know. You know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how I like that. I don't know. That's kind of because it, it just became a whole thing. Yeah, yeah. It was a saga. <laughs> yeah, and it's a whole it's a whole thing with these soundtracks. Like I'm trying to find, I'm trying to dig and and look for articles or any sort of information or any sort of like interview or something. I don't know what's up. I still think it's because of uh, Alexandra Patsavas, the the music uh, supervisor. I think it's because she had like a record label and some of the stuff was probably on there. I think it's just licensing mm, issues. Okay. But some it's just like these these soundtracks like on the streamings are just not intact. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like notorious for soundtracks in general to be like that. Mm-hmm. But just these ones in in particular for as popular as they are and mm-hmm. as like as as much of a thing as each of them was you'd think it'd be easier to find a, All in a, one a yeah full intact mm-hmm. playlist of what what is what it is right um but i mean i had to like i made a i made up i made one ourselves for our our purposes of the podcast so mm-hmm. it's in it's in the show notes and i think last week i think the new moon episode i i included it too and i included the the uh, playlist that I was using because that one was a complete playlist of New okay. Moon songs that somebody had already compiled and like added the artwork and made it super pretty for New Moon. Mm-hmm. So, so that was cool. So whoever did that, thank you for that. I don't know whose it was. I'll probably give them credit in the show notes as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, make a note of this hobby. Yeah, do that. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Any sort of uh, but just thank you for listening. Thank you for for continuing to share this for rating and reviewing it. Um, gives give us the five stars or the thumbs ups and the subscribes and the shares. It really helps out in an algorithm, uh, an algorithmic t- t- type of world. Uh, let us know. Uh, I mean, let let people know that like movies and like music and that that this might be something that they might like to listen to and like like to talk about and stuff. It's mm-hmm. just it's it's a uh, it's it's little factoids, it's little things, and then we try to do our best here. And and you know we have a good time. We have a good time. Twilight Eclipse, 2010, directed by David Slade. David Slade. Now, this is like, what was it like, the theater, the temperature of it all? Like, what was it like when this one came out? I mean, at this point, it's just my perspective, I guess. This one, I felt like, was more upbeat in general. Like, it was just like a more Uh action-y movie. It wasn't so, like, drama, like... The moodiness, yeah. I guess, it kind of like steered it in a different direction. Um, so it felt it felt different in that way. Like, I guess it felt a little more adult. Uh-huh. I don't know. It didn't. I don't know. 
Yeah, I get that. It, it's as if, like, it's growing up with the crowd, I yeah. guess, you know? And then Bella's graduating high school at this point. That's the whole backstory of this. Mm-hmm. Bella's graduating. They're all graduating. She's already a year older. A year older. Mm-hmm. David Slade directed one of my favorite vampire movies. I don't know how much... I don't know if people hate 30 Days a Night, if people are just whatever about I it. Think I love it. loved it after the fact. Like, um, they didn't appreciate it when it came out, but oh, after I did, the fact, yeah. they were like, oh, this one was really good, actually. Because yeah. I see... Um, I forget the other man, um, the other actor, the one that played the main vampire. I know he pops up in a lot of, like, memes and stuff of, like, just that he gave the best, one of the best vampire performances. Yeah, he was awesome. Mm-hmm. What's that guy's name? I'm trying to find him right here. His name is Danny Houston. Danny Houston. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Is he a Houston Houston? No, because it's... Yeah, he's a Houston. He yeah, he's John... He's a bro- half-brother of Angelica Houston. So he's... Oh. he's Yeah, he's John Houston's... John Houston's son. Wow, Fucking Houston's. Cool. And I mean... Th- so another Houston... There is, an, there is another Houston just about in Eclipse. The day. Uh-huh. In Eclipse. In this movie. Yeah. Yeah, in the flashback. That's crazy. Wow. So in the flashback, it's... You said the 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 one that plays. I think his name is Danny Houston. Let me figure it out. He plays. Where is it? I'm trying to find him real quick. Jack Houston, not Danny. Jack Houston. He plays Royce King in that flashback. Uh, that um. With the wolves and stuff. No, the the flashback. That Alice, no, not Alice. That Rosalie has when oh, she tells, when oh, she talks the guy, about the one who's supposed to be her husband. Okay, yes, okay, okay. Yes, yes, that's Jack. Okay. That's that's Jack Houston. Wow. Jack Houston was in Boardwalk Empire. Yes. He was recently. He was also in House of Gucci. Uh-huh. He he was actually supposed to like. I learned in the podcast on that on the Blank Check podcast. He was like shortlisted to be in uh, a, a Star Lord. Like he's mm. you know, but I guess I don't know. Like so, like. He it just, was a popularity contest. I'm yeah, sure. and he's just not. He's like, he's just. I don't know. You know, he's just. I don't know. He's under the radar. I like him. I, yeah, I, you know what I mean. Like, I feel he, like he's just under the radar for yeah. a lot of people. He should have been more of a thing. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Thirty Days of Night is one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. I, I love That's that movie. Good. Yeah, I really do. Uh, David Slade also directed Hard Candy. Did you ever see that one? Yes, with, I did. With Elliot mm-hmm. Page. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one was fucking. That yeah, was fucking awesome. I remember awesome. seeing that one and, and I was Wilson. like, oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that's a good one. Uh, most recently, he he did he did one called Dark Harvest that's on Amazon that I want to check out, mm-hmm. and I want to check it out because it's like I seen stills of like or like clips of the creature and like the blood and gore in it. Mm. He's a blood gory guy. Mm-hmm. It's also like if your horror film is gonna be a little more gritty and fast paced, like he's kind of your guy too. Mm-hmm. He did um, that Bandersnatch. The, the Black oh, Mirror okay. film. I didn't see that. Uh, it was cool. We, sh- we should mm-hmm. do that one day because mm-hmm. it's 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 like a choose your own adventure. You have so many endings. It's mm-hmm. some you know, after a while you're like, okay, Yahweh, but but it was pretty neat. It's mm-hmm. it's a pretty cool thing. He also did the episode of Black Mirror called Metalhead, the one with that predicted like those little robot dogs. Did you see that one? Um robot dogs. Maybe it was in the first season. It was in the second season. The first two seasons were the best. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, I did season. see. I did for sure see the first two seasons. But the style in in this film, like he, his style for this, works. It's cool. The plot's weird. Let me get into the characters. Mm-hmm. But but you know, like from this point on, like it's 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 a phenomenon. We all know they're doing different directors. It's kind of mm-hmm. like a thing. But but David Slade was kind of like like you know he, he's up and coming after that. I think maybe Thirty Days of Night like probably pushed it over. Maybe they wanted to make it a little more like because uh-huh. the what are they called the the newborns are uh-huh. all kind of more rabid, right? Yeah. So he wanted maybe like more ravenous vampires mm-hmm. and stuff. But I don't know, man. Like with these movies, like they fuck with the lore so much. It, it's like it's because you they gotta figure portray your portray them to be so like whoa. But then like they're doing these things where you're like, okay, that's not very menacing. Yeah. like seeming. I don't yeah. know. No, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's weird. Let's see. The, so, so we already brought up Jack Houston. He in in flashbacks. So it's flashback time. It's mm-hmm. the flashback movie where we learn about all, all the other dudes. Yeah, we learn about Rosalie's background a little bit. And Jasper. We learn about Jasper's background. We don't a learn about. Bit. We never learn about Kellen Lutz. 
<clears throat> no. We never learn about him. Mm-mm. Why? He's just she. He's just Rosalie's arm candy. <laughs> like nobody cares about him. Or Alice? There's no Alice backstory. Alice, I'm you sure there. Think? I'm sure there's more. I mean, in the books, I'm sure they talk about it more. But it was just those ones were more because they had to deal because it helps with the later movie. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Or for whatever was happening in the moment. Mm. The addition of Xavier Samuel, Xavier Samuel, who plays Riley. Um. I feel like he did a good job for whatever they gave him. Uh-huh. I feel like he 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 played his part. Yeah, I don't he know. Didn't bother me. He didn't bother me, but it's like either make Victoria like more, or or like I guess they were trying to split the difference, and it was a whole like recast. Okay, so now Victoria is played by Bryce Dallas Howard. Uh-huh. You know, she's brought into the fold. It's a it's a fa- more famous actress. Like, but I just feel like... But she just wasn't, like, as much as she was the main big bad in this, she wasn't a part of it as much. Yeah, because it's like they couldn't use her because then Alice would see. So yeah. she had to just be whispering in his ear. In his ear, yeah. And even at that, but like... it just... And then... Uh, it They just didn't go far enough, in my opinion. Like, in my opinion, it's like, if you're going to get a David Slade and you're like, go, okay, mm-hmm. push it over. Yeah. Push it over, like, Riley... Be a little bit more, like, because mm-hmm. like sometimes he's uh, but but he's also just he's kind of just mm-hmm. just blah sometimes. Like he's he, he could be better. Yeah, he could be better. I, I feel like that's all of these movies. Everything it could be better. Like, <laughs> it should have been better. You know, Xavier Samuel was also in that Elvis movie. He was in Fury. He was in Blonde. I I don't I don't really know him. Do you know him more? Or do, have you Mm-mm. seen any of these movies? He was in that movie Adore. Where like the the each mom wanted to fuck each other's son. Oh, that one I didn't see. I remember <laughs> hearing about it. Uh huh. That was crazy. <laughs> Give me that movie. That's crazy. That's crazy. Let's see, Renee, Renee. Yeah, I mean that. You know, mom, Renee. Let's see. I'm trying to think who else is new in this. Seth, uh, um, yeah, Boo 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 Stewart. Seth, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I guess he was in also. He's in like the Disney, like those Descendants movies. Yeah, he got a little popular after this for that kind of stuff. He did. He's in um, X Men: Days of Future Past. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And then it was Leah Clearwater, yeah, a new character too. Let's see what who plays Leah. Julia Jones. Julia Jones. Julia Jones was in also also in Rin, Wind River. That mm-hmm. movie's pretty cool. That movie's so good. That movie's pretty cool. If you yeah, haven't seen Wind River. I think it's still on Netflix. Um, yeah, I'm pretty um, sure. Yeah, but it's so Elizabeth Olsen. Good. Yeah, Elizabeth yeah. Olsen, Jeremy Renner. Jeremy Renner. Ooh, so good. Yeah. Jeremy Renner's so good in that movie. I like Jeremy Renner. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I like him. He, she was also in Jonah Hex and The Ridiculous Six. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. And you know, there's a bunch and of other I think movies. there was like a little bit more Volturi got introduced. Yes. Maybe. Let's see. I'm trying to look. Uh, more. Um, more. It says here Peter. Oh, Peter Murphy was the cold one. Love. That's why. That's Peter Murphy love. That's why I was oh, like, shit. I can't even think. And I was looking at him and I'm like, but he looks like somebody. He looks like Peter fucking Murphy love. See, that that we learned made something. the movie Boom. much cooler Boom. than it was. That but I kept, I kept wondering and I'm like, he Peter looks like. Peter fucking Murphy wow. love. That is <laughs> so cool. That's so cool. Peter Murphy, singer of Bauhaus, singer songwriter in his own right. Fucking, I've seen Peter Murphy a few times, and we saw Bauhaus a few years ago mm-hmm. at Cruel World. Fucking vampire music. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's cool. It makes me want to watch it again. Right? <laughs> Just to be like, yeah. Yeah. He, I mean, he his other he's another. Well, his other movie role on it was a uh, fucking uh, the Hunger mm-hmm. when when Bauhaus was playing in the Hunger. Yeah, that's we got we got to do that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got to do that movie on this. Just if not, if anything, just to talk about David Bowie. Yeah, for sure. We should probably just do like a David Bowie movie run, maybe. That'd be so fun. That'd we could be do cool. Labyrinth. Labyrinth is actually a really good soundtrack. Like mm-hmm. besides like the ones that are more kitty and sing songy, yeah. there's so many good songs on there. <laughs> we talk, we'll talk about this off microphone. Mm-hmm. Mm, that'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, but yeah, P- wow, Peter Murphy, holy shit, that fucking blew my mind. Mm-hmm. That blew my. I was like, who the fuck is the cold one? 
boom. That it, so there's, he's part of a flashback. He's part yeah, of a flashback. That's cool. Wow. That's so cool. Good. Good on them. Uh, that was awesome. That, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Byron Chief Moon, play, like in flashbacks, he mm-hmm. plays uh, Taha Aki. Uh, let's see. Uh, Monique Ganderton plays a beautiful vampirist. There's uh, some more queer warriors. Let's see. Jack Houston. Hmm. Oh, Daniel Cudmore, Cameron Bright, Charlie Buell are the added um, Valtteri, the, the ones that mm-hmm. kick it with, with Jane. Yeah. Let's see. Who else? Let's see. That's pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the the, uh, the other speaking vampire, the, the, the lady, uh, uh, Cat- Catalina Sandino Moreno. She's the one in... She's... Ja- Jasper's yeah, flashback. flashback. Mm-hmm. Jasper's so inconsistent in this fucking movie. like. It's like, do you have a fucking accent or mm-hmm. not, bro? Yeah, yeah. But she's in that movie. She's in a few movies. She's in those Che movies. Okay. Uh, let- she's also in Love in the Time of Cor- Cholera. Um, Love in the Time of Cholera is uh based on a book by uh Gabo G- Gabriel Garcia Marquez, an amazing writer. Like we gotta watch those movies some at some point. Yeah, yeah, amazing stuff. Uh, she's also in that a most violent year. I want to see that one. We started it. Yeah, and then we also started Eastern Promises. Like, there's all yeah, yeah. There's all these movies that we started. It's because sometimes we start them late, and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm with asleep. you. I'm with you. Mm-hmm. I get you. I get you. But yeah, that's that's really like that was that was it for the the additions to the cast essentially. Mm-hmm. In the next two movies, like. There's so much cast that we're going to have to fucking talk about. Like, yeah. there's so much cast, and then, ugh, that's going to be annoying. Why? <laughs> I mean, it's going to be funny. It's just, it's funny, but it's like... there's so many people. Yeah, it gets crazy from here on out. Like, if you thought it was wild up until now, like, this movie on... So, this movie is the, like... I don't know, it's like the, the hookup mo- It's like the love story, origin story. Then it's like the breakup movie. And this one's like... So we end up at Marry Me, Bella. Yeah, this one is the this one is where it's me. like, okay, I'll turn you, but we have to get married. We got to get and married. And she's like, but I'm too young. I don't want to do that. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. But then she's like, well, if that's the only way and this is what I really want. So she agrees to it. And then Jacob confesses that he's in love he's with in her. in love with her. And that he'll do anything and this and that. And he learns that she's... Well, and then he tells her, well, and she punches him in the face. Oh, that's and, right. Like, she breaks, breaks her, her hand. hand. Yes. And Edward gets so drama yeah. the way he's like all snarling, but it's uh, just So like... many scenes that were the same scene where he's just snarling mm-hmm. at him. Like, oh my <laughs> gosh. And then like we're, that, that one scene where we're like... So, so like, it's so, it's, it's a whole thing. Like, I guess it's like the whole, I guess it's like the, well, if we're going to get married, then I need to be cool with my friends still movie, mm-hmm. maybe. Like, because she starts hanging out with Jacob again and, like. Well, because she's like, I don't want to tell him yet. And, <sighs> and this then, and that. Yes. Because there's a whole. She's trying to have her cake and know, eat it, too. Um, Alice sees the vision of the newborn. So, that's like, they have to form oh, yes. an alliance with each other. Yes. So, like, she doesn't want him to be mad because then the alliance will get all fucked up. But yeah. then it's like, well, no, you can't have your cake and eat it, too. Like, So, in the background of all of this, uh, Victoria uh, has bitten and created a newborn to head her army of newborns and pretty much act as, like, her proxy. Mm-hmm. And so, Alice can't see what she's Alice, trying yeah, to do. And trying to find, and, like, hunt Bella. I mean... Hunt is a fucking hunt is a stretch mm-hmm. because Bella never goes anywhere. Like Bella is always in Forks. She always ends up back in Forks. Mm-hmm. She's she graduates from Forks. It's not like it's a fucking huge city. It's like and it's not like they're fucking inconspicuous. Like mm-hmm. she hangs out with vampires that are obviously vampires <laughs> that and that have the fucking killer house in town that that fucking they throw the big party at. That too. Like there's a whole party scene in this that's like ridiculous. That. The party scene for me was so like, okay, you couldn't have her, <laughs> a one person at her own birthday because she got a paper cut. And now you're going to have all these bloody bodies hanging out and nobody gets hurt. Yeah. Nobody's the on like, their period. Exactly. Yeah. None <laughs> of the girls at this party, which is basically the whole last fucking graduating class has to be at this, like, 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. people that probably yeah. weren't even graduating were at this party because it's exactly. like if the town's so small, there's that many kids at your party. Like there's no way. Yeah, in a town so small, there's that mm-hmm. many kids. That's period. Why. There's that like, many kids, and period? none of them are on their period. None of them. You can't smell any a, of their blood. Like, how big is their graduating <laughs> class that they're fucking, like, so they graduate this mm-hmm. year. So that's a whole thing. They all have yellow eyes. Nobody fucking, nobody notices that they're all having yellow eyes when they're graduating. Well, uh, no, the yellow eyes is what they want. It's the red eyes when you know that they have But still, eaten. like, people, human beings don't have yellow eyes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, that's but no this, fucking... in the book, they describe them as, like, an amber, like a golden amber. So it seems like a, you know what I mean? Like, where it's all just right, that it. striking. But it's like, all these adopted-ass kids all have the same <laughs> golden glowing. <laughs> It's so uh, much. It's so it's so fantastical. And we've seen so many movies where there's such a fantastical plot or idea and they just execute it so well to where you don't question it. And this one just is too many holes where it's like, but wait. Yep. <laughs> you know? I just I don't I It's it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. I don't a hundred percent get it. So it's, then basically um, it turns into like Jasper's the most yeah. um, equipped to train everybody so because he's a yeah. newborn. He's the closest to being a newborn. So Riley's building an army of newborns. Mm-hmm. He's, uh, so a newborn is a new vampire, and like we've they're already heard, super. Before, they have the super ravenous. strength. That's when they're the most strong. Yes, they're the strongest. They're so hungry. They're mm-hmm. bloodthirsty, and so that didn't that whole continuity. Did, I didn't get it either. Like they had to kind of work it. It seemed as though Steph- Stephanie Myers had to work backwards from like Jasper's the most recent newborn in in part one to like well now he heads the now he mm-hmm. can fight the newborns because he's mo- but it's also like wait but it's it's also because he was an officer but- <laughs> in the army and when the when he got turned so in the flashback you learned yeah, it's a, that, that he was true. an officer oh in the Texas Cavalry and that's when his yes. accent really comes out and you're like oh he's Jasper Texan. from the Texas Cavalry he starts ma'am. calling everybody ma'am and ma'am sir it's silly but either way this is when he gets turned and it's by these three Mexican vampires <laughs> I love that they were so like it just reminded They're me so of spicy yeah, yeah they were and so the main one. Um, has him create an army of vampires Jasper. of newborns back in the when he first got changed. So this is why he knows so much about them, and he knows how to defeat them, mm-hmm. and he knows what makes them tick or whatever. And he has all but these scars like so from convenient. newborns biting him, I guess. And like. he's able to tell Bella about his past, and she's like, your scars are just like my scars. And it's just, uh, yeah. they have a, a bonding, and she realizes that, I do really want to be with Edward, and nothing's ever going to change my mind. Yeah. Oh, Jasper, I'm going to make you a vampire. <clears throat> and those the training scenes, too, that they would have yeah. with Jasper. <laughs> like, come at me. Come at me. Like, oh, okay, bro. Like, oh, my gosh. It's that, and that's in the background. And then there's an alliance form between the, the, uh, the wolves and the vampires because everybody has to keep mm-hmm. Bella safe. Bella, Bella. Bella, <laughs> Bella has to be safe. Who's gonna keep Bella safe? I'm gonna keep Bella safe by and then by in the holding midst her of all this, carrying her. You see that the Volturi, some of them, like Jane and her brother and yes. Felix, have come into town because they find out about the newborns yes. and they're trying to figure out what's going on and if it's the Collins that are doing <laughs> it. And, they and they're the most to, obvious. Yeah, they decide to not intervene and they want to see what happens. Like maybe the Collins will die and whatever. Like, like ooh, let's see what they want to see what's here. going on. Here, I want to see what's going on here. I'm a <laughs> vampire. I'm a Volturi. I'm a so that so that's what's going on there. The werewolves are joining forces because Bella, 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 Bella. And Bella, then you learn Bella. that the, all the be- uh, all the Bellas. All the- <laughs> All the werewolves have like a a telepathic connection when they're in wolf form, and, and they then can we, all yeah, hear each other's hear, thoughts. Yes. We also and hear you more learn about the, the love triangle. Yes, and a deeper connect. We we get in deeper to um, imprinting also because mm-hmm. it's like this is where where Kristen Stewart where Bella's like, well, Jacob, have you imprinted on somebody? And mm-hmm. Jacob's like, you would know. You would if I know. Had. If I had. <laughs> 
Oh, moody. Oh, my gosh. And then, like, so he's pissed at her because she's going to be a vampire. And he's like, what? What's going on? And he's pissed at, he's pissed at Edward. Like, uh-huh. I'm fucking tired of your shit. Fucking making her a fucking vampire. And then, like, they I'd have. rather you be dead than be a vampire. She gets super offended. And then they have it. to, like, escape to, like, the peak of the mountains for some fucking reason. No, to- it's because, so they learned that, okay, the, the newborns are coming. They're coming yeah. for us. So... They're like, Bella can't be anywhere near the fight. So Edward's like, I'm not going to be in the fight. I'm going to stay with Bella. And the safest place is for us to be with each other. (laughs) And then so the the agreement was that they were going to go camp out away from the fight. Uh And that um, Seth was going to stay so that they would have a telepathic connection still with the fight. With somebody, okay. And he would watch them. Yes. But then Jacob comes and... um, to warn, or see, he comes to say something or whatever, and then you learn that he's not going to fight either. I'm going to stay yeah. here and I'm going to be with and you. And he's got the telepathic connection. And it connection. turns to be so convenient because it's so cold and stormy up oh there. Oh my gosh, I know. That Bella's like freezing to death. So Jacob has to warm, warm her, her up with her and buff, next to shirtless her. body. It's, that's, <laughs> such, that's such a Tina's, a Tina's yes! fucking vision of a mm-hmm. fantasy of a. That's well, totally. I know, I, I know, I, I love her. But his butt is rubbing uh, against me. <laughs> And then she's like asleep, but pretending uh-huh, not to live. Like you're not asleep. How then, could you be asleep right now? Jacob's like, I, I love her, bro, but I know fucking, I know that you love her too, bro. And then Edward's like, I know, bro, and I love and her. And I'm really bro, glad you're here. Really I, I, I want to kill you, but, fucking, but I'm glad you're here. I'm fucking kill you, bro, but I'm glad you're fucking here, bro. And like, <laughs> it's like they all want to fuck each other. Uh, you know, that's what Stephanie Meyer actually wanted to write. Mm. You know, there's a few verses, there's a few pages mm. where they're just fucking. <laughs> Sucking each other's dicks and fucking in every hole. Like, that's what's going on. You oh know that that's exactly what happened in that. Like, the exact thing. This is this was the, the, the Mormon version of it. You know what I mean? Anyway, th- so... So then the they showdown. learn in the fight yeah. that things aren't going the way they planned. Yep. And, uh, or no, no, no. What happens? Um... No, Riley finds them. Like Jacob, no, remember Jacob gets mad because oh yeah, and then that he and then finds he, like, out that they're gonna get married. Yes, and so he's married. Pissed and what? You she's like, married. don't leave, don't leave, kiss me. And it's like he left. Anyway. Oh yeah, he so left. She tells him to them. kiss her, and they have this like dramatic <laughs> ass, like long kiss. Like she never even kissed Edward that long. And then at the but end it of it, even... he's like, I'm going to go now. So it's like, why the fuck did you need him to kiss you? He was going to leave anyway. But like, that wasn't... didn't flow right. It there didn't wasn't... make any sense. Like, their kiss was, like, the most not. Like, it was not. Like, there was not. Yeah. It just it was wasn't. Awkward. It was so awkward. It just wasn't. But even even at that, Edward no, Edward knows like yeah, that was not, and like he's like I know you did, but then was right, he's like oh yeah, I know you kissed him, know, but bro, he's I'm like I could hear Jacob's thoughts are pretty loud. Yeah, he's a dumb little boy, and I'm 108 years <laughs> right? old. Right, you're man. gonna marry I'm me. Like, you yeah, kissed him, but you're marrying me. <laughs> yep. And then they bro. realize because Seth comes out, and it's like. They're on, oh no, he can smell Victoria, or he can hear yes, Victoria's thoughts he all of a sudden. Thoughts. That's right. So they're like, oh so no, fast. she's here. And then her and Riley show up, and she's telling him, <laughs> like, see, they're they're using their telepathic thoughts against you. And Edward's like, <laughs> think about it, Riley. Like, she's using you. He's like, you're from Forks. You know the area. Like, why the <laughs> fuck would she pick you, some kid from Forks? Like, she does not uh, care about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just even that, like his little thought process of like going back and forth and like, I believe you. And then, no, she loves me. I'm going to kill you. And then, no, maybe you're right. She is trying to trick me. <laughs> but even that, like, why did that have to play out on screen like that? Like, I don't, that I don't like. So, it's, that's what I'm saying. They would pause on the parts that didn't need more pause. Yeah. And the ones where you should have did more explaining, there was not enough. There was not enough explaining. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Either way, they get fighting. into a big old fight. And because of People's what Bella learned cracking. when they cool. she learned about the Quileute history yes. and oh, how yeah. the, about the, the original wife, um, she didn't have any special powers like all the other wolves did. So she used her blood to lure the vampire from killing the the. Oh, chief. that's right. So Bella does the same, the same thing, thing so that Edward can get a chance to you kill know, Victoria. That was such a like, <clears throat> I was, I, I guess my eyes glazed over that. I didn't mm-hmm. fucking connect that. Yeah. That she did the same thing. Mm-hmm. Like it was just, I just. In her mind, she was like, <laughs> oh, this is how I can help. This is how I can be uh, useful. But yeah, so they end up 
killing Victoria. That's and they pretty kill cool. Riley. Yeah, I like the way they kill Victoria. Um, That's pretty cool. They kill Riley. And so they're burning the bodies because it's like, okay, the Volturi are going to be here in like 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so they're trying to like clean up this mess right before like the, the parents Volturi, come home. Yeah. Like, we didn't do anything bad. No, that's cool, Dad. No, no, no worries, Dad. <laughs> we didn't drink any of your liquor. It's okay. I'm trying to find that little girl, uh, the little girl vampire. Yes. What is that young woman's name? Is it the- Jodell Furland? What's the character's name again? So she, like, she's No, no, that, I know who you're talking about. I just can't remember the character's name. I don't remember her name. Oh. Like, she didn't have a name. She was yeah. just, like, the little girl newborn. No, I think... I don't think that what we were told her name, but it's because of, in the books they did make Brie, such a big... Brie Tanner. Yeah. They so, made, like, another little short story oh. for her. Oh, okay. Yeah. She was also in Silent Hill. Mm-hmm. She was in Case That's 39. That's she was, Silent yeah, Hill. Yeah, she was, like, the little creepy kid. Mm-hmm. You know, she's, like, the. she was the creepy kid, but she looks, I mean, she's older now. She's, mm-hmm. It just says she's a Canadian actress. And, like, the Collins wanted to keep her, like, because she, like... Was like, please oh, yeah. don't hurt please me. And like in the books, me. you learn that she like begs and whatever. And like the Colons offer her asylum. Like, you're going to be our new adopted child. But no, the, the Volturi But the Volturi are like, um, you don't make that choice. Yeah. <laughs> that, that girl did. <laughs> We're killing her. I, I like the Volturi. Jane's like, no. <laughs> yeah. Jane's my favorite because she's just like, no. And then she throws baby. Oh, well, not this one. <laughs> I can't wait for that one. I can't wait for No, babies. this one she just uses her little to hurt people. She just looks at them and yeah. hurts them. Yep. But yeah, they supposedly convince them that nothing happened and everything's fine. And so the Volturi go on their merry way. Yep. They try to tell them that Bella's going to be turned soon. Don't worry. This isn't the last we've seen the Volturi, though. No, that's, they are coming back. They're coming back. But yeah, it's it's like this whole it's that movie was too this movie is too long. Like there was it was a hunt it was two hours and that's the story. Like we explained the story in fucking twenty minutes. Like mm-hmm. that movie was too long. Yep. And then like the ending was like, now we have to tell uh Billy or Bella's father. Oh yeah. Like mm-hmm. the whole thing too is that, that whole like, at the end, she's like, I know like the, I'm more real in this world than I am in that in my world. Yeah. And I really want to be a vampire. And then like the whole thing is that she's gonna go to Alaska, the University of Alaska, quote mm-hmm. unquote. But is that so is that that's just is a, that a, just that's, a cover? Yeah, it's that's just, just a, a cover. cover. Yeah. Like, that's not gonna But happen. like what parent? What fucking parent? Mm-hmm. And like this is a whole like this this is the one where everybody is like like, uh, they travel to Florida together to see her mom. And, like, this is where she's like, are you sure? Like, he's just staring at she you. Moves, and he's just you move. Yeah, and, and like, like magnet. it's like they're trying to make it romantic. But and it's, it's just like so creepy. Forcing, and it's like you could have done a way better job of developing and showing how strongly they felt about each yeah. other. But you didn't. You showed Riley looking back and forth and back and forth <sighs> for five minutes and instead. Then, but also, like, just just whatever you did show of their relationship still looked like, oh, my gosh. Like, get this guy mm-hmm. away from her. Get this guy away from her. And it's like at the her. end, it's like, okay, we're going to get married. We're going to have sex. And then you're going to make me a vampire. Yeah. Like, and, like, it's it's a metaphor for her just mm-hmm. being like, just fuck me. Like, it's like, like you know, and... Mm. This one isn't my favorite one. My favorite ones are coming up. My yeah, favorite, my favorite movies favorite are ones. freaking because they're just this one I wild. liked better because it was just more. There was more stuff mm-hmm. going on. It wasn't so yeah. sad and like Ooh. yeah, true. To me, it felt like a bridge. Yeah, it felt like the bridge mm-hmm. to the big finale. That's all it was. Yeah, it felt like the bridge to the big finale. Mm-hmm. So, but at the same time, like I was gonna ask, like, was this meant to be the final one, or was it always meant to be like Breaking no, Dawn? No, Breaking was... Dawn was always gonna be, okay. but I think it was like. She had just finished writing Breaking Dawn or something, and they okay. were already, like, making the movies and then trying okay. to decide. Okay. So it was only going to be one movie, but then they were like, no, this has got to be two movies. Like, we can make oh. so much more money. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know it was just going to be the one movie. Yeah, I think it was supposed to just be a one, and then it was like, now nah, we're making two. And now we're making the saga. hmm I mean, thankful. Thankful for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, grateful for that. <laughs> Let's get into these, these, let's get these, this soundtrack. The first song, this is a cool one. It's, it was, I, how can I say it? I, each soundtrack has something, has a whole thing about it. It has a different characteristic. Mm-hmm. 
it's a little more upbeat. I feel like more bands on this try to sound like the Killers in the previous one. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's. I don't know. I don't know. It's uh, anyway. Starts off with Eclipse by Metric. <clears throat> Metric, a band from indie rock band from Tor- Toronto, Canada. Um, Toronto, Ontario, Canada consists of Emily Haynes, who like does the leads on everything. Joshua Winstead, James Shaw. I like them. What do you think? I they always have popped up on my stuff, and I've heard a lot of their uh-huh. music, but I've always just felt like kind of like meh with yeah? them. Oh, okay, okay. I like, like they're them. They're there, and I don't mind them, but I'm always like I'm always wanting more. Okay. You know. Yeah. 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 Maybe I get it's that. Just, it's her voice. It's very soft. It's very yeah. Like they're the 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 most popular album of theirs that I know of is let me let me pull up the the name of it. I also know them more from the Scott Pilgrim soundtrack because they let's it's the da, na, da, yeah yeah. Da, that was the main song, right? Uh-huh, that's so, yeah, the main that's thing. That's the one that where yeah. I'm like, see, like I was expecting that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only song. Fantasies. That's, like that. that's the album. Fantasies is the one I'm most familiar mm-hmm. with of theirs. Uh, and then no, not yeah, probably that synthetica. I listened to that album after the fact, mm-hmm. uh, but I like them. They're pr- but I, I get you. I get what you're mm-hmm. saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 with you on that. This song isn't like it. No. It reminded me of like Sixpence and the Richer. Mm. Like, yeah, that's why we're like, mm, yeah, I was yeah. not a fan. That's what this album this album res- reminded me of. Mm-hmm. Kiss me, yeah. of Sixpence and the Richer. Mm-hmm. Oh, don't forget to remind me. Well, okay, so Stephanie Myers also has playlists for these two. Mm-hmm. Um, I forgot the New Moon soundtrack playlist that I was gonna bring up last time. I okay. forgot to bring it up last time. So I'm gonna bring up the, the New Moon playlist at the end of this and the Eclipse playlist after this too. Okay. Metric, this song streaming, you could find it under metric. It's gonna be just like a single and it's gonna be like a piano version of it. Mm-hmm. Like the full band version of it, the the music video version of it. I that's the only place that I've seen it. I see it exist. Mm-hmm. I don't know, like unless somebody has the C D version of the soundtrack right. and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so that's what that is. Then we go to Muse, more Muse, Neutron Star Collision. No, no, no. This is the song. <laughs> I, I think I sang this song the last movie. Oh, okay. Because it's Muse. Like, I guess they, they kind of blend now. Yeah, They're blending that's why now. I'm like, I don't... Like, I get it. They're like, blending. beautiful voice. He has a beautiful voice. But after a while, I'm like, it's all the same. Yeah. Then they, this is where they're, like, writing for the movie. They're, mm-hmm. they're writing the songs. For, they're writing the movie. And I'm just kidding. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's an, it's okay. Oh, it's an okay song. No, 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 no. It's it's cool, yeah. The bravery hours. So, in on my playlist uh, that I created for this soundtrack for YouTube, the bravery song hours is attached to some like it's it's like some friends. I guess like some some dude <laughs> made a slideshow for his friends. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and the song like, we got we'll watch it after this but yeah, like you're on like you if you listen to this watch it it's fucking funny <laughs> <laughs> it's just like these people like from like the early 2000s like and then partying and shit yeah it's that's fucking, so funny the bravery though um this song the bravery it they remind they're one of those that reminded me of um the, the killers yeah, it's yeah. all the. Mm-hmm. I was never like a mega no. fan. Like they came out at the time that the the bands were coming yeah. out, like the Stroke, the Killers, uh-huh. the Braver, the Black Keys. Uh, they formed in two thousand three. Band consists of Sam Endicott, guitarist Michael Zacharin, keyboardist John Conway, uh, bassist Mike Heinbert, drummer Anthony Burrow. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I apologize. They're most famous song is oh, na, 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 mm-hmm. na, na. I had to remind myself that yeah it was like at the time he was kind of like a mixture like the dude kind of looked like a mix between like Danzig and fucking Morrissey mm. like he had like that kind of look to him yeah um like handsome looking dude 
but I mean, the band like that was kind of like I don't think this. How popular were they? Were they a, were they bigger? Were they did they ever beyond that? I think it's just they weren't bigger for us. Okay, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, they were, but huh. for us, I just feel like it was okay. not a. Was they got like, back eh. to. I guess. I guess they're getting back together. I mean, I, I mean, um, like a bunch of other galaxy. Uh, I mean, galaxy ga- uh, uh, legacy acts. Galaxy acts. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Like a bunch of legacy acts. Hmm. Um, they're getting back together. They're posting. They're doing stuff. Let's see. Oh, they played with a Tame Impala. They were doing a Tame Impala thing uh, in Mexico in 2021. They played the Just Like Heaven Festival last year. Okay. Oh, we're going to see Metric this year mm-hmm. at Just Like Heaven. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, okay. I mean, we'll, we'll, I'm going to watch them. We're yeah, gonna, that's yeah. fine. I'm not worried it's about gonna it. It's super like... Mm-hmm. Ah. Yeah, there's like more acoustic music on that than I realized. Like I was like uh-huh. looking at it, and I was like, oh yeah, it's gonna be like way more chill. Yeah, like, like it's gonna way more be summertime, chill indie. Like yeah, California. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's gonna be a good, good festival. Excited for that. Just like Heaven Fest. Next song. So ours. It's an okay song. It's one of the songs that sounds like the Killers. Next song. Heavy in your <laughs> Florence and the Machine. What's your take on Florence and the Machine? I like Florence and the Machine, and I get it that she also has a very distinct voice. Yeah, and it's I like very, her. Like, yeah, Florence Welsh. But for me, I don't feel like every song sounds the same. Yeah. I just yeah. don't. She's a good songwriter, mm-hmm. like she and every like all her collaborations are always good. Like yeah. she writes for other people, and mm-hmm. those songs are always good. It, it's a mix of stuff. It's art pop. Mm-hmm. It's like there's funky stuff. There's soul. There's stuff like this that's yeah, just more like, like ballad. Uh-huh. Ballady. This is like power mm-hmm. song. This is like heavy in your arms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I was also going to bring up that these songs. Okay, so. On the Eclipse, the, the the Twilight Wiki, the soundtrack like portion of it has laid out the scenes that the songs come out on. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let me catch up real quick. Eclipse by Metric is the first song of the ending credits. Yeah, okay. that's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, Neutron Star Collision is the second song that plays at the graduation party. Okay. okay um, yeah. Hours by The Bravery uh, is the first song at the gra- graduation party. Okay, okay. So it's just like... Nobody will be listening to that shit at a fucking party. Hmm. Like, even then, even then they were listening to the fucking thong song and the fucking, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> Come on, <that> choo-choo! Come <laughs> on, <that> choo-choo! <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, they, I don't know. People don't get fucking high school parties. No. Like, like, I guess uh, Euphoria. Euphoria got mm. high school parties, I guess. Kind of. Ooh, that's crazy, huh? Mm, yeah. Aye, aye, aye. Anyway, next. Uh, so, Comes out at it's the second song of the ending credits. Mm. Yeah, um, Florence Welch. Uh, she the band formed in London in two thousand seven. Okay, okay. Was it the Dog Days Are Over? Was that the was that mm-hmm. her like her big like yeah, her out of thing? One. The the big like crossover hit. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. The Dog Days Are Over. Um, she's won a lot of Grammys. She's won a lot of awards. She's won. Uh, she played at the Nobel Peace Prize concert in 2010. Like, I mean, you know, she doesn't need our accolades. She's she read. She's she read. She read. <laughs> she's read. Yeah, she's read. Um, but in my eyes, not more rad than the next song. The next singer songwriter, Sia, mm-hmm. uh, "My Love" by Sia. This. Song pops up during the on the scene where Bella and Edward kiss heavily and passionately, mm-hmm. and Edward proposes to Bella and she accepts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ooh, I, I that that song like it's uh, this song's my favorite song on the on the album. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. Yeah, this song's my favorite song. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's br- very pretty. Yeah, like. One of her best. Yeah. And she's got a lot. Like, And see, I liked Sia. So and not that me, I like her give me, less. Give me more. What do I you know about her? Sia. Okay. So Sia for me came out when Robin came out. Okay, like That's cool. when I remember. Okay. 
I've known about Sia forever, but nobody cared. Not until she started doing the Maddie Ziegler videos, right? Is that her name? Uh, She's I don't a dance know. moms, whatever. She was on that dance, whatever show that okay. was popular. She oh, did all and that her kid, it's the kid now. that was uh-huh. dancing with. Okay, okay, I get you. Yes. So, yes. Or until Sia started wearing the wigs. Yes. Like, nobody really, like, she came, like, she brought herself back. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, And she started wearing the wigs and stuff. But even before, like, one of my favorite songs from her came out, like, way before then. And I'm like, why does nobody not care about her? Mm. So, it like, as in the more recent years, I've, I guess, cared about her less. Just because she got so popular with, like, the masses. Yeah. Um, We're indie kids. I get mm-hmm. it. Yeah. But I still like it's still. She I has still a like beautiful it. voice. She's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to do a deep dive on Sia. I, d- I think I want to personally like do some video watches and more yeah. listens of her albums. Like, you know, yeah. start to think. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. But this song, it's my favorite. Like, even thinking about it right now mm-hmm. made me want to cry. Yeah. Like, yeah. I know. I don't know. It made me think about It makes me think about you. I don't yeah. know. Like, you know? Yeah. It's. And it's because it starts off like harrowing, like, mm-hmm. nah, nah, nah. and then the, nah, 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 nah. Mm-hmm. that's fuck, that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. It's, yeah, I can't mm-hmm. even, yeah. Um, so Sia, can't, can't, she, she's awesome. She read, she read. Mm-hmm. Next song is by a band called Fan Farlow. It's a song called Atlas. Kind of poppy, like, you know, indie poppy, like for that time. I don't... Fan Farlo, a London-based indie alternative band formed in 2006 by Swedish musician Simon Balthazar. Uh, yeah, indie folk, indie... Everybody says post-punk. Like, that's... I don't... Mm-hmm. I mean, post-punk can mean so many things, but no. Yeah, I don't know, no. man. I don't know. And then plus, I got... They, I don't know. I just didn't. It was like it's not meh, the best. This song is meh. Yeah, this song is meh. Uh, and I love Swedish. I usually love yeah Swedish musicians, but this victim, one felt like eh. victim of the soundtrack. It's a victim of the soundtrack. Uh, Fan Farlo, Atlas. I mean, you know, they. It's these these soundtracks mm-hmm. help these people's careers too. Yeah. So good, you know, good on good on that. Like fucking keep doing you, keep doing you for whatever it is that you do. Next song is by the Black Keys, Chop and Change. It's the song where Riley exits from the bar in Seattle into, into the rainy night. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's what opens up the movie, essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Black Keys. I like the Black Keys. Dan I Arbach, like the Black Keys. Patrick Carney. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, two, duo, but like, you know, they're, they're, they've got the vintage, bluesy, mm-hmm. like, fo- like Dan Arbach's solo stuff is more, it, it, it can experiment more. Mm-hmm. Like he does more. He does more roots music, but then he can get a little more fuzzed out here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, he also has his own record label that that the brothers uh, the hermanos Gutierrez is on mm-hmm. his is on uh, Dan Auerbach's label. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember watching the first performance of their like their first television performance ever live on Conan O'Brien. Mm-hmm. Like it was, I remember. Like I used to watch Conan O'Brien, not knowing like yeah like. Un- Understanding late night shows, but not understanding like what the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. Like, and just being a kid and like just laughing because he's like it's a bunch of funny guys. Yeah, and then and he always had like the best musical guests, mm-hmm. and like this was like the first show that that um they 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 were on, and I remember seeing that, and I was like, it, it was like it was around the time that the right white stripes were pretty popular. Mm-hmm. So I was like, the Black Keys, and mm-hmm. there are two people. It's like, huh. Are they just copying? But they fucking rocked it. They yeah, rocked it. Yeah, they were right. Good. Yeah, they rocked this. Uh, good band. I think they're Michigan. No, Akron, Ohio dudes. Yeah, they're from Akron, Ohio. Um, I mean, they're they're super popular now. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're fucking rad. Fucking rad. Next song, Dead Weather. Victoria and Riley kiss passionately. Hmm. This is uh, the Dead Weather. What do you think about the Dead Weather? I like them. Me too. I can't wait to see the kills in a few weeks. I know. Uh, Dead Weather, it's a super group uh, formed. Uh, it's Allison Mossard of the Kills and Jack White, the White Stripes and the Recon Tours. Dean Fertitta, who is in Queens of the Stone Age, who we just recently watched. Uh, he also plays with Iggy Pop on occasion mm-hmm. and stuff too. And like Karen O, but he also he plays with a few people. He's, he's like a, he's, he's, he's a man of many, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And Jack Lawrence uh, plays with the Rack on Tours also. Um, rockin' Band, pretty cool. Jack White plays drums in it. 
And he does some vocal stuff too, mm-hmm. mainly vocalized by, by Allison Mosshart. Fucking rad. Mm-hmm. Their records are good. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's some good records. Um, nice and hearty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The kills are awesome. Like, she's rad. I don't know. Allison mm-hmm. Mosshart's cool. Like, mm-hmm. I can't, yeah. They're cool. I really can't wait to see them. That's going to be so cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Next song. Well, okay, hold on. Hmm. Maybe I called my favorite song early. Or no, this is probably my second favorite song then. Because that Sia song just hits mm-hmm. it. Um, but this is my... These are my favorite artists on the albums. Yeah. Beck and Bat for Lashes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Natasha Khan, Bat for Lashes. Natasha Khan. Um, Casey and I, like, early on, kind of, like, this was one of the... She was one of the artists where we were both like, oh, we both like her. Mm-hmm. And, like, like, we had listened to her separately. Uh, my, my, what was the album? Uh, uh, Two Sons. Two Sons was when, when I, when I got into her, that had the song Daniel on mm-hmm. it. And like, like it came with a DVD and I, that I watched all the time of her making the album, things mm. like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's I would cool. watch that all the time. Yeah. Um, awesome singer songwriter. Uh, she's English. Um, the, the last album was fucking sick or, or wait. Yeah. The last album was that Lost Girls was that fucking... The one that we were listening to for a while mm-hmm. that was like super like yeah dancey it was dancey, more dancey and more like it sounded like Lost Boys music mm-hmm. yeah that was yeah. fucking cool yeah it sounded like vampire music uh, she rocks Beck is awesome uh, Beck Hansen Beck David Hansen uh, he I mean he's also a Scientologist which is uh, or I, I I don't know if he's like still practicing or mm-hmm. whatever his lineage is I think he might have like kind of distanced himself recently mm-hmm. uh, but also singer songwriter producer of his own right legend one of one of my influence like being a solo artist mm-hmm. seeing and listening to Beck forever and 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 like just knowing the things that he does like like for there was a I had a I had my Beck period. Where it's mm-hmm. just like I everything he did and like looking at his musicians and like looking at every video I found that of him on, in the studio and things like like there so many things. Mm-hmm. Like awesome. Like awesome one man band. He he blends folk and pop and funk. Yeah. And, and he can write with anybody. Um he has written with many people. And this song is is awesome. Like it's a cool song. It's a cool song. Is this what I don't I don't know. What do you think about this song? What's your Oh yeah, I like the song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's got like a cool, like kind of tribal mm-hmm. beat ish. This is also one that you can find on, on the streaming, but you can't like it's not in the soundtrack. It's like you have to kinda like search for Beck and Bat for Lashes. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. Next song. Jonathan Lowe, Vampire Weekend. This is where Bella rides off with Jacob on his motorcycle to La Push. Mm. Mm. Uh, I like Vampire Weekend. Casey likes Vampire Weekend a lot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny how the other day we were just like, and you were just kind of like, uh. and I'm like, I'm, I get it. It's rich white kid music. Like, yeah, I, I like it. them though. Like I like the I like them as dudes. Ezra Koenig, mm-hmm. Rastam, uh, Batmangali. Um, what's the other dude's name? Like I just like that they're. Is it Ariel so, Reichstadt? Like it's always like there's a lot of going on. Like yeah, lots and of different sounds. They're and, different. It's different. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. There's a lot of different sounds. It's very. They uh, their whole thing like for me originally it was like the first album was very Paul Simony. You know what I mean? Like it's it's like pop, but rock. But yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, Ezra Koenig. Rastam Batmangali, Chris Thompson, Chris Bao. Um, they're gonna come out with an album soon. It's they're more like they're indie baroque pop. That's what it. That's what they're kind of like classified as mm-hmm. art pop, I guess. Yeah, uh, they're cool. I, I, yeah, they're cool. It's mm-hmm. they're cool. I just you've done more of a. I've listened to them more. Yes. Yeah. You, you have listened to them more than mm-hmm. I have for sure. For sure. And and. And yeah, this song's cool. This mm-hmm. song, yeah, it's it fits in this well. It does fit. It does feel like a song that it's like oh, like they needed a Vampire Weekend song for this mm-hmm. movie, and it fit it well. Like yeah. it fit it for the time. It's you know that uh, yeah yeah. I like the next song a lot. Uh, the, With you in my head mm-hmm. by Uncle featuring the Black Angels. This is where Jasper is teaching the Collins and the Wolf Pack how to mm-hmm. fight the newborns. Cool song. 
Black Angels. I believe Black Angels, if I'm not mistaken, are... Yes, if I'm not mistaken, they're uh, they're from Austin. They're a psych- psychedelic rock band from Austin. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Ross did... Uh, uh, did some music, did some rich, like like stuff with them. He did some work on one of their records. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. Hey y'all, JJ Caballero from the future here, and I am just chiming in to say that I did uh confirm my suspicion here, uh, and I'm co- I'm also confirming which Ross I'm talking about. Ross Ingram, who was previously on the Monasterio video episode where we talked about the the soundtrack to the movie Kids. Um go back, go back in the, in the the discography in the in the track list in the playlist and then listen to that one. But yeah, Ross did confirm he worked with the Bastards early on. Uh he did some songs with them, uh produced a song called Black Grease and a song called Manipulation. So, um just wanted to shout out that that Ross is cool and ross does good stuff and i always love to shout out when my friends work on really cool stuff because they deserve the credit for it um all right back to you casey and jj uh but i've known about them for a bit because of like because like you know the psychiness of it the rockiness of it and stuff like that uncle a british musical outfit that's what it's called here <laughs> uh, but you know it's a project founded by james lavelle uh more trip hop producey stuff uh, uh let's see uh, the group it once included producer dj shadow mm. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah good song good song i i guess it's a cool song to be like the foundation of the fight scene mm-hmm. yeah next song was impossible to find kind of like Super hard to find. This one, I think, was on Pandora from mine. Really? I think so. What? A Million Miles an Hour by Eastern Conference Champions? I think so. Let me... On, so on my, on my YouTube, on the, thing, the only thing I found was like a live version of it. And then I found the band on Tidal, but there, that song wasn't on there. No, I lied. This one's not on there. They're a band originally from Philadelphia, later residing in Los Angeles. Uh, they were active from 2005 to 2015. They're also known as ECC. Yeah, they have like a they have a bit of a band history and a little bit of a of a discography, and then that's it. Yeah, they were brought to prominence uh, by by the Twilight soundtrack. Um, they they had an appearance on Last Call with Carson Daly. Okay, mm. that's cool. I mean, the 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 music supervisor she 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 did say that she would find like she would like take submissions like so she probably just had a bunch of stuff and just mm-hmm. like oh this I'm fits. like I like how that sounds for mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's pretty cool that's pretty cool that mm-hmm. that it's like I I think that's why I like soundtracks a lot too because there is like the weird shit like that like it's just like where you would find out about something that you normally wouldn't yeah. ever hear about. And then it's just like, well, where did that band go? And then you find out later, it's like, oh, they never did anything. Mm-hmm. Or like, oh, that singer actually sings with Stone Temple Pilots now or shit mm-hmm. like that, you know? Mm-hmm. It's weird. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, cool. Cool stuff. That song comes out when Jacob's shown on screen for the first time, when he confronts Bella and Edward at school. Hmm. Life on Earth by Band of Horses. So Band of Horses, Band of Skulls, I get I get uh, mixed up with all the time. <laughs> <laughs> band of Horses, I have to tell myself, to the more acoustic band. Band of Horses is the more acoustic mm-hmm. band, indie rock band, dudes have beards. Um, if I'm not mistaken, oh, no, 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 I am mistaken. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, I am mistaken. But they're from Seattle, Washington, led by singer and songwriter uh, Ben Bridewell. And they they do are they still around? Yeah, they're still around. Cool. They're they're a sub pop band. Good stuff. What do you think about Band of Horses? I like them. Like they have a good sound and stuff, but I feel like they're another band where it's like all of it starts to merge together. Yeah. There or you like go. I couldn't see them live because it would just be like put me to sleep. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They have that one song. That's like super popular. No one's gonna love you like I do. Mm. I'll show it to you. I'll, I'll, it'll, it'll, you'll hear it and you'll be like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. that's that. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
beyond that, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. It does kind of blend. It's like a yeah, like a like a beach house, mm-hmm. like a yeah, yeah, yeah. Good band though, like yeah, yeah good band. Yeah. They're they're con- they're solid. They're continuous. I think I think you can be like a folk band, but still do shit like my morning jacket, right? Like. They were folky, jammy, and like they explore different sounds a lot, like mm-hmm. in different records, and they get they get weird and psychedelic here, mm-hmm. and they, you know what I mean. Like you could do that, you could do that, and mm-hmm. still, you know, or you could work backwards. You could be the rock band and be more folky. I think that works well too. Mm-hmm. Um, but like just kind of staying in, I guess I don't know. It's a certain people. It's a certain taste for certain people. Yeah, I guess. for I don't know. sure. Yeah, yeah. Band of horses. Band of horses. Life. On Earth. It's where Bella and Edward laying in her bed discussing why he refuses to change her. Hmm. Okay. Next song is What Part of Forever by CeeLo Green. It's the third song of the ending credits. What do you think about this song by CeeLo? I just like, I know he has a great voice and stuff, but I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of CeeLo Green. Like, I no? don't, no, not really. I don't want it. Like even that other song, like I get it, it's super catchy or whatever, but I'm like, okay, and then I'm crazy. I like CeeLo. Um he's become CeeLo Green because has become uh, Thomas DiCarlo Calloway Burton, also known as CeeLo Green. I liked him because when I saw I remember when that song came out uh, by Narles Barkley. When the crazy I was like, mm-hmm. is that CeeLo from Goody Mob? Is that who that is? Because I like Goody Mob. Mm-hmm. Like they're Goody Mob, Dungeon Family rappers. They're uh, same same um, outcast. Mm-hmm. They're in the same crew, in the same group of people. Mm-hmm. They would cross on each other's songs. Goody Mob, like early early hip hop, like that. Like he had a he rapped a lot. He was like the soulful singer of the group and stuff like that. They have fucking awesome albums. Mm-hmm. Good Goody Mob does. Like they're fucking sick. Very out there. Very psychedelic. Yeah. Um, that's why I like that. Like the outcast crew. The, or, the 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 dungeon gang mm-hmm. crew of it all. Um, everybody had their own weird, crazy shit going on, and yeah. like, yeah. So so that's why I liked him. And then he got so popular, and it's like it's that it's the indie kid. It's the mm-hmm. it's that it's like the okay okay cool man okay. I don't have to like everything this motherfucker yeah, does. Yeah 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 yeah. But he also I remember back in the day before before uh, Niles Barkley. Uh, they did an MTV Cribs with him Mm -hmm. and he just had like the most chill house. Mm -hmm. Like it was all like zenned out. Nobody wore shoes there. It was about, it was like out in the wood. It was like out in the beaches, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I remember like he did MTV Cribs and his episode like was rad. Mm -hmm. I I don't know. I don't know. I just remember that. um, But yeah, uh, 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 CeeLo Green, this song is, it, it is, it's, it's of the time. It's of the time. It's like, okay, CeeLo, oh, he's going to get, you know, it's going to get a, a whole demographic of people that can watch this movie because, you know, a bunch of white kids, a bunch of fucking white kids in this fucking, mm-hmm. on this movie. Like, we got to we gotta try something somewhere. Um, so, yeah, that's what I saw in that. And then Jacob's Theme at the End by Howard Shore uh, plays throughout the movie and scenes involving Jacob. Um, yeah, yeah, Howard Shore. This song, uh, Carter Bruel. Uh, return to do the score and stuff, mm-hmm. and he does it throughout. Um, there was some bonus songs. Uh, there was a song playing when Edward drives away from dropping off Bella and Jacob at the Treaty Line. It's it's a, a song by the band called it's it's called the the Lines, and it's by a band called Battles. You ever listen to Battles? Mm-mm. They're like a weird like in, instrumental indie like math rocky band. They're fucking sick. I think you would like battles a lot. I gotta, I gotta show you battles. Yeah, mm. yeah. I think you would like battles a lot. They're, they're weird. Uh, and then how, how can you swallow so much sleep by Bombay Bicycle Club? It plays at Forks High School when talking to friends about the valedictorian speech and Alice's party. Oh yeah, and and Anna Kendrick has that valedictorian mm-hmm. speech. Yeah, she has that valedictorian speech here. Uh, that was a good use of her on that. That was cool. <laughs> yeah, that's the soundtrack. What do you think? What's your favorite song on the soundtrack? I think back when it first came out, the Florence one was my favorite. It's a good song. But then later, it was the Bat for Lashes. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Let's get low. 
It sounds very Talking Headsy too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that song's very Talking Heads. Yeah, that's a good song. That's the song I just I just can't it's, get over. Yeah, it's a I love can't. song. Yeah, because I love you. I love you mm-hmm. a lot, and I love that you like showed me these movies, and I love that I can like I have that song to think about you now too. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, let's check out these alternative playlists mm-hmm. by Stephanie Meyer. So the New Moon playlist. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh okay. <laughs> this one. Prepare yourself for what she thought was the soundtrack to New Moon. Mm-hmm. First, it starts off strong. The Flaming Lips, do you realize? Okay. What the my favorite Flaming Lips song? The best. The best. Paper Cut by Linkin Park. Um, Hyper Music by Muse, uh, Apocalypse Please by Muse, oh my gosh, Time Stand Still by the All-American Rejects. Which one's that one? Oh, I can't even hear it in my head. But it's a familiar title, right? It's a, it's a, it's a song that was probably a single? Probably. Okay. I've seen the All-American Rejects a few times. Me too. Yeah. Next song, Empty Room, Marjorie Fair. Okay. Unwell by by uh Matchbox Twenty. Hmm. Yeah. Uh oh this song, Jimmy World Pain. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. The Vines Ride, The Vines. Coldplay Fix You. Okay. Um Rooney Blue Side. Man, whatever happened to Rooney? Where'd they go? Hmm. The Fray Over My Head Cable Car. Ugh, duh, I wanna get away from that song. <laughs> Going Under by Evanescence because that song will stick in my oh. head. Going Under by Evanescence. Okay. Followed by Tao Ta- Tube by Brand New. Brand New. Amy and I have been talking recently and it's like, it's a shame that Jesse Lacey is like a piece of shit. Like mm. he's a, he's a, he's an abuser. He's a mm. whatever. Like, yeah, he sucks. Um, it's a shame because Brand New was like such a big part of like the emo thing mm-hmm. that they could have just been having like, like with all this resurgence of everything. Yeah, right. They would have just been like, you know, mm-hmm. but whatever, whatever. Um, Reliant K, Be My Escape. Uh, uh, Never Let You Down by The Verve Pipe. I like The Verve Pipe. I used to like The Verve Pipe. Um, Sing, Sing for Absolution by Muse. This chick and her muse. Ya Mama by Fatboy Slim. DOA by Foo Fighters. Stare by Marjorie Fair. Memory by Sugar Cult. We, we, me and Jake met the members of Sugar Cult one time after yeah. we saw them. Yeah, we saw them play and then we met them. Um... That's a memory I have with Jake going to early shows. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. They're a good band for what they were. Armor for Sleep. I used to like Armor for Sleep. Uh, the Truth About Heaven and Blue October's Sound of Pulling Heaven Down. Any of those songs? What, what do you think of any of those songs in this movie? I mean, there's some bad. I like Jimmy Eat World. And yeah. I like, well, I didn't know brand I didn't know that about Brand New. But, yeah. Nah, mm-hmm. I know. Um, so, oh, she had some alternates, alternates here. Oh, my gosh. More songs? <sighs> okay. Okay, because these songs... Well, okay, I'm going to name the songs that are better. Okay, so like, I'm going to leave out some songs. She had uh, Drag by Placebo on here. Mm. Yeah. Um, World is Turned and Left Me Here by Weezer. The uh, Best I Ever Had by Vertical Horizon. I'm going to skip the Evanescence song. Everybody's Changing by Keen. I like Keen. Nice. Uh, 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 did you like Keen? Mm-mm. No? Oh, no. Huh. Mm-mm. Hmm. That's a that's. I don't know why I liked them. Yeah, to yeah. me it was just so like. Meh. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I did. I had like one of their albums, and I was like, "This is fucking good." Mm. Yeah. Uh, Audio Slave, like a stone. I like Audio Slave. Mm-hmm. I've I, like I've looked back on them and like them now. Mm-hmm. You two stuck in the moment of you can't get out of a uh, saliva song, a collective soul song, a Blink One Eighty Two song. Oh, I miss you. <laughs> Where are you? Okay. I'm so sad. <laughs> I want to hear that song now. Mm-hmm. Um, it said Dido here, and I wanted to say Dildo. <laughs> okay. Oh, Dido. Okay, so this is now we're going to the Eclipse playlist. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's see this Eclipse playlist. Okay, so it starts off with Elbow's Mexican standoff. Uh, Elbow, a band I'm unfamiliar with, really. Mm-mm, never heard of him. No. Coldplay's Clocks. I like that song. Yeah, it's a good song. Um, Blue October, more Blue October, Overweight. Uh, more Keen, Hamburg Song. 
Stab My Back by the All American Rejects, Small Print by Muse. We know it's like we can kind of figure what CDs she had at the time. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. fucking um, Mr. Brightside by the Killers, Newborn by Muse, Love Me Like You by the Magic Numbers. Was that? Do you know? Have you heard that? Mm-mm. Vindicated by Dashboard Confessional, which they couldn't use on this because it was already on the fucking Spider Man Two soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Vindicated, I am selfish. I run, I run on sweat. I like that song. <laughs> Hysteria by Muse. Oh my gosh, with Muse. Uninvited. Ooh, by Alanis Morissette. Mm. That's a fucking good song. Right? Fucking Alanis rocks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good song. Ooh, Infrared by Placebo. Mm. Mm, okay. Gonna see Placebo. Oh, I know. That's cool. Yeah, gonna see that. That's so cool, huh? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yes, Please by Muse. Whatever. The Boy Who Blocked His Own Shot by Brand New. That's a good fucking song. Their fucking records are awesome. Like, I, it, I, they were a band that I used to talk shit about. That I, I like just to be a naysayer. Mm-hmm. It was like, no, I don't like them because I like taking back Sunday, and I don't like them. You know, Amy, you like that? You're stupid. And like, <laughs> we'd have those fights about that. But no, those those records are good. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie, that's shit. That's good shit. Love by Travis. Travis, I like. Uh, Blackout by Muse. It's a disaster by OK Go. Falling Away With You by Muse. And then alternates are This Is How I Disappear and Sleep by My Chemical Romance and then The Well in the Lighthouse by Arcade Fire. Um, Arcade Fire, I like. Yeah, me too. I like My Chemical Romance. Um, there was a period where I didn't listen to them. I, I like... I like Gerard Way as an artist. I think it, like that Umbrella Ca- Academy was his thing. Mm. I like that he goes for it on like he did he did this and then comic books as well. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. there's like I, I think that's cool. It's, I'm a comics guy, I guess that's why. So yeah, um, I could see why nobody let Stephanie Meyer pick the music for these fucking movies. <laughs> yeah, because these soundtracks would not have been as good. No. No. Any last thoughts on this soundtrack, on this movie, my love, before we head out of here? I don't know. Just I felt like this one was easier to watch just because it wasn't like if I'm going to watch a movie and it's going to have gloomy colors and mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It it it's not going to have teenagers in it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I don't know. So this one felt more of like. It played the part of the character of the like teeny bopperiness that was happening. Yeah. Yeah, I get you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm with that. Yeah. I'm with that. I mean, it's not my favorite one. I had a lot of laughs on this one. This one was full of laughs. This one was full of ridiculousness, like ridiculous situations that are completely unrealistic. Like the whole tent and he's laying on her to keep mm-hmm. her warm thing was silly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the, the, it, it was... Jasper's story is confusing. Like, what? And then Rosalie. So Rosalie, essentially, like, she misses being human because she was rich. She she misses being able to have a family. A family like, she and all can't that. Okay. procreate. Yeah. She can't have kids. She can't, okay. like, grow well, old. hold on. Because the next movie. That's why this was the setup for that. But But Rosalie can't have kids. Yeah, but she she understands the wanting to like she would care more about that than anything else. So of course she's gonna protect the kid. But then how does Bella have a kid? Because she was still like half you know what I mean? She wasn't like f- like transformed. We gotta get in we'll get into yeah. We're gonna get in yeah, we'll get into that. Uh, Cause now I'm confused. Now I confuse myself. I'm like, wait a minute. Another hole. In this otherwise airtight saga. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my gosh. We're going to need to get into that after we watch those ones. We shall. Okay. Yeah, because... I forget the timeline. Huh? Does not compute for you? No, yeah, it's not compute. Uh, that kind of like made me glitch out a little bit. Like, wait, hold on. <sighs> I mean, this one just, it's like, so it ain't like, uh, we're heading into Marriageville, guys, and we're heading into vamp, like more vampires, way more vampires. Mm-hmm. And 
the most ridiculous part of this about of this series, which is my favorite, which is mm-hmm. also my favorite part mm-hmm. of this series, like because it's so ridiculous, and I can't believe how much money was spent on these films, mm-hmm. and I just it's it's baff- baffling, like what they are, and yeah, it's. It's a baffling ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is why we're talking about it. <laughs> Thanks, my love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you always for jumping on here, love. And and uh, and uh, and doing these with me. And, and being the best co-host. I and, try. <laughs> and thank you guys for listening. Any plugs? Deep cuts? Deep cuts. Deep cuts. Deep cuts underscore EP. At Monosterio Video. Look in the links below. Uh, we'll include links for help if if you know or you if you or anybody you know uh, is experiencing um, you know bouts of domestic rebu- uh, abuse. If there's if there's anything in these uh, movies that rings true to you, or if there's anything that rings true to a lot of, of this, it, it is that you know there, there's a weird uh, abusive nature to these things and a weird like past that a lot of these like hot boys get in these movies yep. uh, for stupid shit. So, you know, if you recognize that in your own life and, you know, you, you need somebody to talk to or what have you, we'll, we'll post some links uh, in the bio uh, uh, for, for services that, that will help out with that. Um, yeah, keeping that keeping that in, in also always in the conversation here because these movies are fucking ridiculous. They're also movies. They're movies. like, And they're based off of ridiculous stories by written by a, a, a woman that's probably probably ridiculous like in, <laughs> like in her world. I don't know. She's probably ridiculous. Um, yeah. So Casey is Harry. Uh, deep Cuts. Mono Stereo Video. You can find me at underscore J-J-C-A-B-A-L-L-E-R-O. Um, listen, if you haven't listened to, if this is your first episode, listen to the rest of these where we've been talking about soundtracks for a while. We did a whole run of the Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross soundtracks. Um, even before that, we had some cool stuff. We talked about train spotting. We talked about Romeo and Juliet. We've talked about, uh, um, uh, what others? Uh, the Queen of the Damned was one of them. Blade, Spawn. Spawn is like, at, Spawn is still the longest episode that I've yeah. done. Like, I've done on the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mikey had so much information. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, it's still the longest episode. Um, but yeah, you can find us everywhere. You can uh, thank, share us, rate, review us. Yeah, we're here. We'll be here next week with Breaking Dawn Part 1. It may be both, but we are going to talk about Part 1 for sure. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that next time. So until next time, we'll listen to you later.